Hello, this is Angela with Progress Permaculture. Today I want to talk about cardboard in the garden. Um, first off, I had like a little injury doing yard work the other day. It's it's really healed up pretty good, but um, I nearly put my eye out. So you should go see my Facebook page if you want to see what happened and know that gardening is not a no risk activity. Anyway, today I want to talk about cardboard in the garden, particularly the kind of fear and concern that people have around using cardboard. Now you may or may not be familiar with sheet mulching or lasagna gardening in which cardboard is used as the initial layer over whatever is already growing in your garden, usually grass, to uh, smother and kill the grass and, and kind of start over without having to do sod ripping. Now I've used all kinds of methods to remove grass in gardens in my 25 plus years experience doing permaculture. The one that I think has worked the best, and I actually saw a couple other people comment this as well, is double digging. That worked great when I was in my 20s. In my mid 40s, I find double digging is extremely labor intensive, hard on my back, hard on my wrists, and not worth doing. So if you want to convert an area that has been lawn into, you know, a, a good place for cultivating food, I highly recommend double digging. I know a lot of permaculturists may take issue with that because you are disturbing multiple layers of the soil, but when you are starting out with an area that is very compacted, and particularly a lawn that's had people moving on it or may have had things parked on it or structures on it, um, coming in and working the soil down those two shovel lengths deep is, is really beneficial in my experience. I know a lot of permaculture people don't wanna disturb the layers of the soil. But, you know, if you are relying on the natural way, the slow, small solutions way to do that of saying, let's plant, uh, you know, crops like rhubarb or things with a large root to come in and break up the soil. We don't always have the luxury of years and years of letting perennial plants get established, develop an extensive root system and kind of break up soil that's compacted. Sometimes we have to come in with mechanical means on our own. So for those of us that don't want to do French double digging, lasagna gardening, sheet mulching has become very popular. You lay down an initial layer of cardboard and then in lasagna gardening, you can put layers of compost and leaf mold or even just fresh leaves, uh, straw and wood chips, right? Basically like the layers in making a lasagna. Straight sheet mulching, you typically do cardboard or newspaper about 10 layers thick and then wood chips on top great way to smother and kill grass, a great way to suppress weeds, especially in pathways. I use it everywhere. Last week, I sheet mulched an area, this little narrow strip between my shed and my neighbor's driveway. It's very small and this section tends to grow grass and weeds. And the most effective way to deal with that is to put down cardboard and wood chips on top every few years. However, there has been some concern lately because a I think they're a group of bloggers because they have a plural at the end of their title, um, who claim to be garden experts, but in my experience tend to post really clickbaity stuff, posted this, this post. The post makes really bold claims about PFASs in cardboard and basically says, if you want to keep forever chemicals out of your garden, don't use cardboard. They then share a chart of data with a few sections highlighted that are supposed to prove this point. Be forewarned, I'm going to be throwing a little bit of shade here. I'm going to come straight out and say that this post was irresponsible. It was clickbait. It was fear mongering. It was totally unnecessary. And if you saw this post, I saw it shared in probably half a dozen gardening groups um, I am in initially when it came out. And then this week I have seen it shared again twice in my local backyard wildlife habitat group. Um, and in backyard wildlife habitat groups, folks use sheet mulching a lot. They're often trying to remove a monoculture lawn and they're trying to put in natives. And so sheet mulching is, is a strategy that is frequently employed. So this post was basically like, oh, this study came out saying there are, you know, PFASs in your cardboard and they're not safe to use in the garden. You're going to put PFASs in your soil. PFAS or PFAS are a group of two compounds that are known as forever chemicals. And they're the more we learn about them, the more they are a growing concern for um, causing liver toxicity, thyroid problems, increasing your risk of cancer, et cetera, et cetera. And forever chemicals are so concerning because they accumulate in your body, right? And in, in your landscape, right? So while I am not a physician and I'm not a biochemist, um, 
you know, I will link to some sources down below if you want to learn more about them. Before we get into the study that these folks are using to say you should not put cardboard in your garden, it's worth noting that PFASs exist in all kinds of products that we use regularly. The classic example would be nonstick cookware, but they also exist in makeup and clothing. Recently, those eco-friendly bamboo and paper straws that we all thought were a more green alternative to plastic ones have been found to contain forever chemicals. I'll get into this more in a bit, but the main source of PFAs in paper and cardboard products is actually food packaging, particularly from takeout foods. Consumer Reports did a great piece on this where they said that the majority of the PFASs that you get are from carry out containers and food wrappers like French fry bags. Okay, now let's look specifically at the claim in this Facebook post that cardboard is not safe to use in the garden because it may contain PFASs. So this study that these bloggers referenced on their Facebook post that freaked out many, many, many people um, was a small study, and I will link to it down below. So this study was testing poultry bedding made from shredded paper products, cardboard products and the potential exposure and accumulation of PFAS in the bodies of chickens that were housed with this, um, this kind of bedding. And based on that study, uh, again, small sample size, one study, I have not seen it repeated anywhere. These, these professors made this post that were like, don't use cardboard in your garden because you're gonna put forever chemicals into your soil and potentially into your body. Don't do it, scary, scary, don't do it. And folks were freaking out. I saw people posting like, oh my God, is my is my garden, like can I eat what's coming out of my garden now? Because I have sheet mulched with cardboard. And I saw folks who were posting about doing lasagna gardening or sheet mulching, getting comments from lots of other people being like, no, no, don't do it, it's not safe. So let's talk about it for a second. Um, the mixed industrial poultry bedding that was used and was talked about in this study was of mixed cardboard of indeterminate origin. And we're talking food packaging, we're talking uh, freezer boxes, we're talking unknown cardboard, but from a variety of sources. And I wanna make something really clear here. Uh, it is well known, widely available information that about 20% of cardboard contains PFASs. 80% does not. The kind of cardboard most of us the majority of us are using in the garden is plain brown uncoated corrugated cardboard that does not contain PFASs it never has so to scare people away from using an extremely effective method based on data that they either didn't understand or misrepresented in their Facebook post is really irresponsible it is straight up fear-mongering and moreover, if we are talking about our responsibility to not share junk science and not to misrepresent science, you cannot take a small study of like 40 chickens, and we all know that poultry eat their bedding, they consume it. You cannot, from that study, extrapolate that you therefore cannot use cardboard in your garden. We are not eating paper products when we put them in our garden. It's just all kinds of layers of irresponsible please feel free to go back and press pause and read the screenshots of my reply to these folks about why it is concerning that they are choosing to make this representation based off of this data. We cannot make any conclusions about the relative risk to humans based off of potential PFASs in poultry bedding, much less about cardboard in the garden and the risk to humans. What kind of cardboard has PFASs in it? Well, things like the coated takeout containers you get at the hot bar from Whole Foods or your local organic hot bar. That contains forever chemicals. I don't see these people making a post saying, you know, stop getting food at the hot bar. The kind of cardboard that has the potential to come in contact with grease is often coated with PFASs to reduce the absorbency. So when you're looking at frozen food boxes, when you're looking at any kind of takeout container where it has a, a coating in it so that it can't absorb grease. Other sources of PFASs are things like microwave popcorn bags, things like that. Now more and more and more, the USDA is working on removing PFASs from containers that come in contact with food. 
I want to interject here in the editing phase for a moment to talk about the sources of PFAS contamination that we are experiencing. In a consumer society, there is so much pressure on the individuals to take responsibility for pollution and environmental contamination. But we know full well that the big mega polluters are corporations. I encourage you to please read this study that I'm referencing here. I will link to it down below. But the largest sources of PFAS are industrial polluters, the military, airports, and actually firefighter training sites. Fomenting fear about what type of cardboard we are using in the garden is a distraction from the actual substantial and impactful sources of PFAS chemicals that are being dumped into our bodies and into the environment. As I've said many times on this channel, what we need is policy change in order to protect us and our planet from large corporate polluters. Okay, back to the cardboard debate. But the reality is there are cardboards, about 20%, mostly those that come in contact with greasy food that may have PFASs. The reality is also that plain brown corrugated cardboard or like cardboard boxes that house um, like appliances, right? That if you buy a new microwave or you buy a new coffee maker, that box is not going to have PFASs in it. And that's well known. So to, to make a really inflammatory post, warning people to not use cardboard in the garden because of this one small study is really concerning, especially if you're setting yourself up as a, an authoritative voice about what is and isn't safe in the garden. And if you are setting yourself up as an academic who can speak authoritatively on peer-reviewed studies, irresponsible. So why am I making this rant? It's not just to crap on the folks who made this post, even though I left a lengthy reply on their Facebook, their Facebook post and they didn't take it down. They didn't clarify as far as I know. I am making this video to reassure you all, you can safely use cardboard in the garden. To understand what you are putting into your garden and into your bodies, that's really important. But to also understand that when we are taking a waste product, and we are following the permaculture principle of produce no waste, and we are seeking to reuse that waste product as a resource, it's, it's incumbent upon us to do our due diligence to learn about what is the composition of the product that we are using. For example, I see a lot of people reusing like water bottles or other kinds of plastics that deteriorate rapidly under UV light, and you wanna really be aware of how you're using those in the garden or anywhere, how you are reusing a product which is why, of course, I think it's super important for us to have a basic kind of understanding of chemistry and have good scientific literacy. Like that's a really important tool in the toolbox of permaculture. We're not a bunch of like ignorant hippies who are um, more interested in kind of the woo than the science, right? If we want to do good permaculture, we need to embrace the science and learn it. Scientific literacy and learning how to read a scientific paper is also crucially important to not falling victim to clickbait junk science and not feeling unnecessary fear and anxiety, right? Knowledge takes away fear. It only makes us stronger and more effective and safer. But I want you to feel okay using cardboard in your garden. I want you to feel that you don't have to freak out there are so many other things that are actually of real concern to put in your garden. Landscape fabric is a big one. Anything that sheds microplastic. But I also want to encourage you to remember that we live in a society where PFASs or microplastic contamination, where all kinds of other um, contaminants from industrial production mean that there's virtually nothing that we're going to get that is not somehow contaminated in some way, shape or form. For example, when I get compost from the city free compost days, that is composted leaf litter from Portland City Parks, and it often contains all kinds of crap in it. Um, it contains little bits of plastic, it contains uh, little bits of metal, it contains the tops off syringes, because everything everywhere is contaminated with garbage because of how we live our lives in an extractive, convenient manner that is not conducive to sustainability and resilience. And for me, when I see those kinds of things, it's just reinforcing for me how much I want to be practicing permaculture more effectively and how much we need systemic change because what we're doing is we're creating a future that is full of problems for those who come after us, right? And in permaculture, people care means we are caring for those of us here now, but we're also caring for future generations. And we want to make sure that we are not passing our problems off onto folks down the line. And so for me, 
when I encounter articles like this one, it, it makes me want to dive into like, what is the actual science? What are the actual risks? What are the ways that we are exposed to microplastics, to uh, organic compounds that are potentially harmful for us and for folks that come after us? And how can we use that information not to fear monger, not to make clickbait that gets us revenue off our blog, but how can we use it to create a more sustainable world? How can we use it to uh, create policy and change that stops these streams of pollution and contamination and creates a more sustainable way of living. So I think that's plenty of a rant about that. If you're using cardboard in the garden, good for you. I have some other uh, videos I hope to make in the future about this because there is one researcher here in the Pacific Northwest who is extremely anti-cardboard and her work gets referenced a lot. And I would like to dive into that more in the future, but not in this video. It's a little too long. Um, and I take issue with her research as well. Um, but thanks for watching today. I would love to hear your thoughts on sheet mulching in the garden. I'd also love to hear your thoughts on, on how we as permaculturists who have to interface with a world that is not built for sustainability, a world rife with pollution, a world rife with folks who are perfectly willing to put harm into the environment and potentially then into our bodies for a quick profit, how we deal with that reality in our pursuit of sustainability, in our pursuit of creating a regenerative, regenerative future. Um, cause it's something that I think about a fair amount and I don't necessarily have a great answer to, especially as somebody who doesn't have control over folks who are, you know, who are the producers of most of the pollution that we all have to bear the consequences of. So yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe and I will be back from my permaculture garden next time.